You're listening to MPS Connections with your host, AJ Hoffman. Welcome to MPS Connections. I'm your host, AJ Hoffman. I'm here with Saiba Kaur and Preston Kamara. Thank you guys for being here today. You guys are both Dow High School Chief Science Officers. I also want to thank our engineer, Abby Young, for for doing all the technical stuff that she does. So first question, guys, what does it take to be a Chief Science Officer? Yeah, so okay, Chief Science Officer, we call it short for CSO. Um, Chief Science Officer is basically a STEM advocacy program. And so it's a bunch of 6th through 12th graders who get together, and they're trying to just promote STEM in their community, whether that be, you know, through an event they host, you know, just activities that they do, and then also just trying to, like, bring that love of STEM to themselves as well. Preston, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, you pretty much summed it up. <laughs> <laughs> you probably already answered it, but what does that mean to you, Saiba? Yeah, so for me, that means, like, being an, uh, an advocate and a role model for STEM, especially for, like, girls in STEM. Um, yeah, and then also just exploring my interests as well. For me, being a chief science officer, it, what Saiba said too, I, it's being an um, advocate leader for STEM, and basically, you know, just showing people like, hey, STEM isn't, you know, the stuff that, you know, you sit in a classroom for and you, you know, a bunch of nerds and all that, and it's basically just, it, it's something fun. You see STEM all the time, and it's, bas- it's basically just teaching you, or we're basically trying to show you that, hey, you know, it's just like, you know, playing games and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. How I'd say is like, leadership and like being an ad ambassador that's how i would say it yeah so saiba how did you get into it and how did you level up to where you are now yeah so you know i'm much older than preston i'm a junior right (laughs) i got into it in sixth grade so the first year you can be in it and that was 2018 um and so at that time the two cso at jefferson had already like kind of moved on to high school so there was some open position And my sister used to do this, like, club there. So I would just go wait for her while she was, like, um, you know, doing her club. And then the teacher there saw that I was interested in science because I would just kind of watch my sister. And then she invited me to join this program, and I joined it. And then once COVID happened is when I uh, started actually, like, getting involved because before that I was, like, really, really shy. I wouldn't really talk or anything. But then during COVID they had these, like, online opportunities. So I started getting involved, and it – kind of opened me up so I was able to do a little bit more speaking wise and then after COVID that's when you know I are I had been able to kind of open be more open-minded there and then I got really involved with the different networks. What about you Preston? Yeah so I was introduced to the program when I was in fifth grade and uh, you know I signed up to do an interview and and to get to um, get in the program in middle school but, but then COVID happened so not much happened after that. And then once I got into middle school, I heard about STEM Club that Saiba and the other Jefferson CSO led at that time, and I, and, and I, <clears throat> and I learned that they both led it, and I was like, oh, this would be kind of cool, you know, see, you know, what the CSO program is and all that. So I joined it, and then I learned that, you know, that, that they need a new CSO for when Saiba graduated next, the next year. So I signed up for it, did um, presentation, all that, and I was elected by my peers to become a chief science officer. Yeah. And then, uh, so starting off, and I'm going to start that over. Um, <laughs> and then, so after I got into the program and all that, we started it. I worked with one of the legacy CSOs, Ava, who led Flight 9. You know, I kind of tagged along with her and all that because I was interested in aviation. She asked me to help out. And then, so that's basically how, where we are today. Yeah, and fun, fun story, actually. So Preston mentioned he was, he was coming in for when I left eighth grade, right? And so I was actually like, one of the people picking him. We had to like pick people, you know, elect them in. So we elected Preston. <laughs> yeah. So what, what are some of the responsibilities of a, of a chief science officer? Yeah, Preston, do you want to start with this one? Yeah, so one of the big responsibilities is the action plan. And an action plan is just some sort of thing to get, to get people interested in STEM and, you know, to know something about STEM. This can be, you know, something as little as doing, you know, announcements over or doing something over the morning announcements, like a STEM fact, or doing a STEM event like flight night. And that, that yeah, that's basically one of the big responsibilities of a chief science officer. And then, you know, partaking in different events within the CSO program from time to time. Yeah. I think it's also worth mentioning, like, what is the purpose of the CSO program here, right? So a big thing I mentioned is, like, youth voice. And so, like, what is youth voice? Well, I would say that's 
um, a lot of youth showing that like we can make things happen if we're given the platform to make a difference. And so the CSO program kind of gives us a platform like, oh, we can provide you with maybe um, a contact to like a STEM professional if you want to make like a professional roundtable happen or something like that. So that's what I would say. The CSO program like gives you the opportunity to host different things that you might want to do in your community. So tell me about some of the, chi- the uh, action plans that you guys have been able to, to kind of initiate. Preston, you want to start with Flight Night? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned before, with Flight Night, uh, so I um, lead us as Chief Science Officer Braden, from, who's from Freeland, and we're both into aviation and all that. We took on the event from Ava, who graduated MPS a couple years back. And what Flight Night is, it's basically just an event that's held at um, Barstow Airport, the airport right down the road from here. And it's to teach elementary school students, typically third and fourth grade, about um, aviation and STEM facts in aviation. Uh, Each time we get about 150 people that come to the event, and everybody loves it. You know, we got stations there, like parts of the airplane, which learns, you know, uh, which shows the, you know, Parts, station parts of an airplane uh, station that teaches about weight and balance on an airplane, physics of an airplane, um, basically everything aviation. And one of the other things that we have at Flight 92 is a flight simulator. Everybody loves that. They kind of take what all they learned and apply it to in the flight simulator. Flight Night is so cool. <laughs> Thank it, you. It really is. It's it's made me think that, like, I could go out and be a pilot, right? Yeah. You know. Flight night is so fun. I went there one year, and I sat in one of the planes. It was so cool. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. Um, so for me, mine's a pretty unique story here, right? So I mentioned in COVID is when I started getting, like, pretty involved. And during COVID, um, one of the program, like, international program leaders, she introduced me to an organization called the Julia Robinson Math Festival, and they, like, basically make puzzles for kids, um, like, game, game-like game math puzzles. And so mine was kind of an inverse. So I started out international, so I made, like, an international math festival on Zoom for, like, the program, and that was during 2020, so it worked out great with that atmosphere. And then I'm going, then I, like, went down so that now I can do it locally so um, this year i'm doing it for seabert and for central park and so i'm actually doing like a bunch of puzzles set up at tables and i'm just trying to recreate those puzzles in in person what are some of the things you have coming up as far as uh your your action plans yeah so my action plan the math puzzle event is next week thursday at central park and so that's for fifth graders and we're going to have a bunch of tables with, like, um, per, uh, puzzles set up. And so it's a bunch of, like, game-like activities. Incorporates a little bit of problem solving, a bit of, you know, logical thinking. And then kind of the other part to this is I did, like, in-person presentations at Seabert for fourth and fifth graders. And so those were, like, classroom activities. And I'm going to just get some feedback from the teachers to see kind of how this affected, like, their pedagogy, basically how their teaching style and, like, math, making it more interesting. Um, And I'll see what we can get from that and then uh, show it back to kind of this thing called the Great Lakes Bay Alliance. It kind of funds the CISO program and show them that um, do puzzles have an effect on, like, people liking math? Okay, cool. Let me shift a little bit. Saiba, what is a cabinet meeting and uh, what what – what do you do in cabinet meetings? Yeah, so a cabinet meeting is just another event of the CISO program. It happens twice a year, once in the fall and once in the spring. Um, it's a time for, like, kind of bring everyone together because, you know, we're all from different schools at this point, like, pretty far away as well. So it just brings everyone together in one place. And normally they have uh, us meet, like, different professionals. You know, one time it was at Dow. One time it was at, like, Hemlock Semiconductor. We might, like, one time we went in the bridge uh, do you remember what bridge it was? The Zilwaukee Bridge. The Zilwaukee Bridge. So just a fun activity to bring us together and then, you know, to give us updates on things. Maybe I'm wrong and this could all be cut out, but the Zilwaukee Bridge, was that, did you guys go with a class to go, at, like, were you inside the Zilwaukee Bridge area and stuff? Or am so, I, is yeah, we different? went, like, we went with a class. It was a CSO, like, just a CSO program. Okay. Yeah. But we did go inside the bridge. Yeah. Like, walk through, Yeah. That's so, so cool. That was really cool. Was really cool. You had, like, you know, trucks and cars and all that, like, two feet above your head. Yeah. It was quite crazy. Yeah. 
Was it like really loud and stuff? It wasn't too loud. I mean, it was. You, you could tell that there were cars driving out there. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah. Wasn't too terribly loud. So, what did you guys learn about what was the what was the uh, the 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 purpose of that that visit? Like most of the time, they like show. For example, that specific trip, it was bridges, right? They talked about engineering a little bit, a little bit of like manufacturing jobs, and then. Also, just, you know, going through the bridge, kind of cool, a history yeah. of, like, our city. It's kind of cool to see that, like, directly in our hometown. Um, yeah, and then kind of the second half of the day is always just CSO work time. So we yeah. planned out these events that we were talking about. Let me go back to the action plans a little bit. Can you kind of explain the passion behind each of your individual action plans? Yeah. Can you can mm-hmm. you start, Saiba? Yeah, so for me, like, mine comes from a long time, like, I've, always really enjoyed math and coding it's just one of my passions you know I even plan to go into like both of these fields and so um kind of like I did a lot of like competition based stuff when I was younger and then now going into high school I wanted to do some puzzle based things because a lot of people tend to say like oh we're not you know math people or they're pretty scared of math a lot so I wanted to do some kind of puzzle based thing to bring like for younger kids to make it fun because, you know, kids like games. Kids yeah, love games, of course. right? Yeah. And so, like, you know, we had different games. There's some, like, videos, you know, like, gave them chocolate. <laughs> you know, it always works. So, yeah, things like that. And it's also just really fun because I mentioned to you that, like, my big thing, I'd say, is kind of STEM advocacy. Mm-hmm. And so, like, being an advocate for STEM in front of those kids, I found that really fun. Preston, tell me the passion behind your, your action plan. Yeah, so I've been really interested in aviation and flight since I've been, you know, since I was young in preschool and all that. And I've always wanted to do an event or something like this since then. So, um, and Ava, who, as I mentioned, led Flight Night, she knew I really liked aviation. So she was like, hey, do you want to, you know, take on this program for me after I graduate? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, sounds awesome. <laughs> Saiba, do you want to tell me about some of the, the change makers in STEM Youth Congress? Can you talk to me about that a little bit? Yeah, so I mentioned earlier that I'm um, mostly doing a lot of my work with like the international network, which is like I got involved with them on Zoom. So with the international network this year, they're partnering up with SciTech Institute, which is it's basically a nonprofit that funds the CSO program. And they are planning a change makers in STEM Youth Congress, which is actually in this month of February. And the idea behind that is, like, design thinking, right? So it's bringing a bunch of youth together in, like, four different categories. So that's, like, aerospace engineering, sustainability, tech for good, and AI. And so they're going to come together, and there's three parts to this, like, learn, design, and share. They're basically um, bringing their ideas in and seeing what do youth really want to do? What do they want to make a difference in? And designing, like, some kind of event with their peers, um, getting support, and then sharing that out to their community. Can you tell me a little bit about being a panelist on the Abnet Women Rise in STEM online event? Yeah. So, um, again, I mentioned, like, I do a lot of work with the international network. So in ninth and 10th grade, um, I mainly just did online events. And so they offered me to uh, be part of this panel for a company called Abnet. They had, like, a woman in a STEM event. And they had me on kind of seeing what are youth interested in, what do they need to make a difference, and you know, just hearing from our voice. So being able to bring, like, youth voice to the table is pretty important, right? Showing, like, these um, employees in this company, like, what us can do as well, and maybe we'll even be in their place one day. Okay. Is there anything you guys would like to add as far as uh, CSOs and uh, what you guys' roles are in your school? Um, you could talk about leadership, council. Yeah, you could yeah. talk. Yeah. we could talk about planning the training institute. Okay. Preston, yes. you, have a, you have a take on that? Yeah, so um, in, the, each, in each cabinet, there's a leadership council, and Saiba and I and one other Dow CSO is part of it, and there's a couple other people from different schools. And basically what we do is we kind of semi-lead the program for our cabinet or our region per se. And we, you know, we lead the training, you know, plan out the training, and we help plan out the cabinet meetings that we talked about earlier and stuff like that. All right, Saiba, can you tell me a little bit about CSO Saturday? Yeah, so that was a big thing, especially in COVID, but it still does exist now. It's, again, part of the international network. It offers CSOs to come online. Um, it's like once a month on a Saturday. Um, and they can, basically, it's like a town hall style event. So 
uh, people bring in like the stuff that they've been doing in their state, like what their state has been doing, action plan wise, cabinet meeting wise, just share that out. And then an opportunity to work with CSOs around the world. And so that those kind of events is where like you can build your network of other peers. And then especially if you're going to like, for example, when Preston's working with someone else on his action plan, you can find people to work with on your plan. So I've actually made a couple pretty close friends from this program. Okay. Yeah. So dumb question. Let me scale back a little bit. Saiba, you're a junior. Preston, you're a freshman. Does your action plan change from year to year? Yeah. So for me, um, a little bit unique. Last year, I had a pretty unique year. I was home a lot of the time. So um, kind of took a pause in my action planning. However, I've kind of always had this theme of like math based plans, but um, ninth, tenth grade, and even eighth grade, they were all like online, mainly just um, like just a Zoom meeting essentially. But this year, now that I'm like back in school and everything, I really wanted to do it in person. Um, and so I've been planning out that math activity in person. But again, the same theme of like puzzles for me because that's what I really am passionate about. How about you, Preston? Yeah. So with Flint and I, we kind of stay. We have the same infrastructure and all that. You know, it's um, pretty much the same thing every year. But we're always building onto it. We're always trying to improve it from you know what people are saying and all that. Uh, and next year in the twenty four or twenty five school year, we're going to try and not make you know where it's one school every season. We're going to try somehow make it like all the schools in one um, year instead of, you know, two schools each year, like doing a flight week or something like that. That'd be massive. Yeah. Holy cow. It'd, to be, do, it'd be a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, to do all six elementary schools mm-hmm. in one year. That's, I, that's still really, really cool. Yeah. I love the way you guys do it, though, because you, you never miss a school uh, was yeah. it over the course of, like, three years or, or four years? Yeah, every, you know, three to four years. Sometimes, you know, we don't do one in a season, you know, for various reasons. But we try we try and touch every school within a three-, four-year period. Yeah. I know I kind of put you on the spot there. I'm yeah, sorry no, about no that. problem. Saiba, what kind of advice would you like to give to other students coming into the role of being a chief science officer? Yeah, so I would say anyone um, who's wanting to, like, be involved with STEM or even just, like, be in, like, advocacy and stuff, um, remember that like you have a platform, right? You have a lot of people supporting you. And so whatever happens, like you can reach out to people. And I think the most important thing you'll learn along the way is talking to adults, right? That's, some, that's pretty scary to do, you know? Really scary. Even for me, it's scary, right? But um, eventually you'll get used to it. And then you'll be able to, you know, make your ideas come to life. And like, even if like something happens that you didn't expect, right? Like you sh- just don't give up, right? Dream big, but don't give up. Yeah. Well, you've made an even bigger step from like talking to adults to talking on a podcast and having yeah. everybody hear you, right? Yeah. I mean, I I think that's a pretty huge step. Well, podcast is cool. I feel like a YouTuber, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> What about you, Preston? Yeah, so at, for my advice to anyone who's stepping in to this program is don't be afraid to try things. You know, um, if you if you if you always want to do like you know a major event or like flight night or something like that, don't be afraid. You know, to go all big and all that and try it. You know, you know if something happens and something gets screwed up, then you know at least you tried it. You know, for next time if you want to do it again. And if you ever need support, as Iba said, it's everyone's going to come in and help you. It's we're basically you know one big family. And um, our CSO motto is don't just hope it happens, make it happen. And, you know, as it basically just says, if you have something that you really want to do, don't just wish about it. Actually implement it and make your dream come true. You know what? The 2024 motto is live, laugh, learn, and grow. That's what I've been going by. (laughs) Just live, laugh, learn, and grow. Saiba, why is youth voice important? Yeah, so, I mean, we've been talking about it a lot, right? So I guess, you know, us youth, like especially me and Preston, we plan to directly go into STEM fields, right? And so bringing in like uh, these, all these activities that like um, people do to impact like youth in our community, they don't always bring in like the direct experiences of us. And so like when, when us youth give in like our inputs and try to make those events better, you know, we can impact even more people. And so in getting more people interested in it will kind of just help our generation as a whole. Preston, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so youth voice is really important so that um, 
so that you know it's you have a diverse say in all of that and um that if you know you got you have someone who's you know a middle school or high school or something like that that and they really want to lead an event or an activity or something that you, you have someone who's a you have another high school or middle schooler who's also led something and that it's not all adults and all that you know it, it's kind it's kind of it, it's always surprising when someone sees like holy cow this event was you know led by middle school or holy cow this event was led by you know someone who's in high school it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Preston, what do you want to do after you graduate? Yeah, so I'm, as I've mentioned many times, I'm really interested in aviation, so I want to go into the uh, pilot field when I graduate. Or some, some job in aviation doesn't have to be a pilot, but some, something that deals with it. Yeah. What about you, Saiba? Yeah, so I am actually very open right now to exploring. I know that definitely I want to do, like, uh, computer science in my undergrad, but then I also think, like, research is pretty cool. Um, especially a lot of the cool things happening right now. Maybe something in that field or like software related. You know, math is pretty cool too. So something along those lines. Awesome. Well, I think this is a good spot to wrap up. I think what Preston said earlier is a perfect model the, to wrap up with the CSO yeah. model. You know what you right? should say, and I should say the first part, and I should say the Yeah. Second. Yeah. Go ahead. Ready? I'll let, I'll let you guys <laughs> yeah. say it. Yeah. All right. So uh, don't just hope it happens. Make it happen. Perfect. Thank you so much. This was our, uh, our week's episode of um, MPS Connections. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you to all the listeners around the district. Thank you to our guests, yeah. Saiba Kaur and Preston Kamara. Thank you. And um, we'll catch you next week. Thank you so much. We loved yeah. it. It was really fun. <laughs> yeah. Do you have an idea for a podcast? Email us at communications at midlandps.org.